Now let's see what is contact dermatitis. Now contact dermatitis is defined as inflammation of the skin, inflammation of the skin due to direct contact, due to direct contact between the skin and the substance. So the inflammation of the skin which is happening due to direct contact between the skin and the substance is called as contact dermatitis. In this relation, we have two important types. Number one, we are going to have irritant contact dermatitis. Number two, allergic contact dermatitis. So these are the two types of contact dermatitis we need to remember. Irritant contact dermatitis is more common, it's seen in around 80% of the patients and allergic contact dermatitis is less common. Now let's see what are the salient differences between irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis. First point is in relation to predisposition. Now what we have to remember here is irritant contact dermatitis is going to affect all those people who are exposed to the irritant. So it affects all who are exposed. Whereas allergic contact dermatitis is seen in selected individuals and that's why it's seen in genetically predisposed people. Genetically predisposed. So this is the first differentiating factor. Now for example, if I keep an example in my mind, it becomes very easy. Now imagine I am going to come in contact with an acid. Now will acid burn only selected people's hand or will it burn everybody's hand? Whenever acid is going to con come in contact, it is going to burn everybody's hand, isn't it? That's why it is going to affect all those who are exposed. And when I talk about a particular allergy, it could be a earring allergy, it could be metal or nickel allergy. So here what happens, allergy is not seen in everybody. It is seen in only selected group of people. That's why this is termed as seen in genetically predisposed people. Let's go to the mechanism. What is the mechanism of irritant contact dermatitis? It is non-immunological. It is non-immunologic. So when I say non-immunologic, then how is the damage happening? This is due to direct tissue damage. It's due to direct tissue damage. Whereas talking about allergic contact dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis is a classical example for an immunological mechanism. And here it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So only in selected individuals, they mount a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction to the particular allergen. Now let's look at the distribution. Now when I pour acid on my hand, what is going to happen? It is going to burn only the area where the acid has come into contact, isn't it? Whereas in some people who have allergy, after some time what can happen, this allergy tends to disseminate beyond the site of the allergen also. So what we need to remember here is irritant contact dermatitis is restricted to the restricted to the site of contact. So the best way to remember this is keep the example of acid in mind. It's going to be restricted to the site of contact whereas in allergic contact dermatitis, it tends to disseminate. It tends to disseminate beyond the site of contact. Beyond site of contact. So especially in clinical practice, what we see is if a patient has hair dye allergy and they repeatedly use hair dye allergy and then what is going to happen over a period of time, even the face can be swollen. Even the eczema can get disseminated. So this is called as allergic contact dermatitis because it is immunological. You can't restrict the immunological mechanism. It can spread beyond. Now we go to the symptoms. What will a patient have with irritant contact dermatitis? It's more of burning and pain more of burning and pain, whereas in allergic contact dermatitis, there's more of itching. So itch is the most common symptom in a patient of allergic contact dermatitis. Now let's look at the common examples for irritant contact dermatitis. Number one, you have detergents, also have acids and alkalis. And if you can see in the picture, you can see that this is very well demarcated. So extremely good demarcation is seen in irritant contact dermatitis. And one special type of irritant contact dermatitis, which is very, very common in children who wear diapers is termed as diaper dermatitis. So we need to remember that diaper dermatitis is an example for irritant contact dermatitis. As you can see, the speciality of this condition, it is going to involve the convex areas. So the convex areas get involved. And usually in diaper dermatitis, the folds are spared, right? You can see the sparing of the folds. So folds are spared and only the convex areas corresponding to the diaper are involved in diaper dermatitis. Now let's look at the important allergens which are implicated in allergy contact dermatitis. The most common metal which produces allergy is nickel. 
The most common allergen which has been documented in cement is potassium dichromate. So this question has been asked in the AIMS exam before. When we use topical medications to treat patients, the most common antibiotic which dermatologists generally never use is neomycin. So neomycin, I've seen a lot of patients who use neomycin and develop contact dermatitis to it and this is very very common as a topical antibiotic. And in bindi what we have to remember here is you can see this is the area which corresponds to the bindi and many of the times the patients have got allergy to the sticker or the adhesive which attaches the bindi on top of the forehead and this allergen here is called PTBP. It's called para tertiary butyl phenol. Para tertiary butyl phenol. So this is the name of the allergen. And in order to confirm our diagnosis of allergic contact dermatitis, we have a very, very important test, which is known as patch test. So once again, to repeat, patch test is used in the diagnosis of allergic contact dermatitis. It's used in diagnosis of allergic contact dermatitis. And what type of hypersensitivity is it? It's an example for type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So how do we perform this test? So number one, allergens are applied over the back. So allergens are applied over the back. So this is available as a kit in the market, the Indian standard series. And here these stickers are available and these are all the different allergens. So we name the allergens and we attach it over the back. And what do we do is we are waiting for a delayed type of hypersensitivity response. So when am I going to take the reading? You look at the question in the exam and answer the question correctly. If the question is asked in the exam, patch test is read at or the question is asked as patch test is usually read at. So if the question is read at or usually read at, your answer is going to be 48 hours or two days. So this will be your answer. In case the question is modified, which happened in the recent AIMS exam, patch test is best read at, then your answer is going to be double. It's going to be 96 hours or four days. And what we do is when we do the patch test reading, we look at the different chambers and we see where do we see the allergens here, right? So we can see the inflammatory response to some particular type of allergens. And then we look at the report and then we tell the patient, see you're allergic to these substances. So you have to eliminate them from your life.